I heard him say, Hank, you're a dead man. Startling moments for a 16-year-old in Laurel County when police say there was a home invasion. The 16-year-old's home alone tells us exactly how he got that intruder to leave. You know, it's just a matter of time it's going to be here. We have a warning tonight from first responders. A powerful, potent drug is making its way through the region. And the search for a missing Boyle County teen is over. We have an update on the investigation into her disappearance and her stepmother's death. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. We will get to those stories in just a moment. First, we are tracking breaking news here in Lexington. Police and the Fayette County coroner are on the scene of a car fire. That scene is near the intersection of Red and Elkchester Roads. They're off Old Frankfort Pike. Police tell us around 8.15 tonight they went to the fire. They found a body in the back seat. Investigators plan to be on the scene late into tonight. Right now they are calling that a death investigation. And we will post all updates that we get online on WKYT.com. We have had some great weather the last few days. Labor Day weekend has been full of sunshine. Expect even more tomorrow. WKYT meteorologist Mike Linden has the no wait weather forecast. You know, we have literally been searching for a word all weekend long how to describe this weather. I've just run through the, the, the thesaurus for words that are great, astounding, breathtaking. We, we've said them all. Amazing. Awesome. The weather has been all of those things the past few days, and it will continue to be so as we head into our Labor Day Monday. We look at the Defender Radar Network. Some very thin, wispy clouds out there right now, but nothing that is going to impact your evening. We continue to stay quite clear and comfortable through the next few hours. Now, notice those winds still flowing against the grain from the east toward the west, whereas normally we see those winds from west to east. This is a little different from the way things, how they work normally, but regardless, it is still pushing in the more comfortable, drier air rather than getting the winds from the south. Of course, the Gulf of Mexico is to our south, the more humid air. That will get here into the middle of the work week, not quite just yet. Temperature-wise, still this evening, holding on to the mid-70s in Lexington, quite a few spots as well, falling into the 60s. But overall, it looks like another awesome day as we head into Labor Day with more fantastic weather. But big changes are on the way coming up. I'll take you through the early stages of the work week and show you when that sunshine could end up leaving us behind. A teen took on an intruder. A Laurel County teenager is telling us how he managed to get an intruder out of his home. Bryson Reed heard someone breaking into his home on Highway 3434 yesterday. He confronted him with a gun. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner talked to Reed in our top story at 11. I woke up and I noticed that my phone wasn't charging yet, it was dead. Grayson Reed was home alone when he was fidgeting with the electric. So I stood up and I heard somebody rattling in the kitchen. And I thought it was just my sister. Maybe she had got back home from work early or something. But it wasn't a female's voice he heard next. I heard him say, Hank, you're a dead man. Now Reed doesn't know who Hank is. He says the day before there had been a note on his sister's door for a Hank. This Hank guy apparently stiffed someone, but the 16-year-old didn't know who he was up against. Without time to think, he says he grabbed a gun. And I was holding it beside the door so he couldn't see it. And he was standing in the hallway with a knife. And uh, I told him to drop the knife, and he told me he wouldn't. And then that's when I pulled the gun on him. The 16 year old says the man standing about five foot eight started to back away. He kind of just backed up, and then he hit the couch, and then that's when he just threw everything he had on the couch. Certainly startling moments for the teen, but he says he expects it for the neighborhood. Sheriff's deputies say they believe the intruder was 29 year old Thomas Scott. Family we talked to says they're familiar with the 29 year old. They say they don't know him, but they've talked to their neighbors and say there's been trouble on this road with him before. Reed says his family will continue on like normal, unafraid of the intruder returning. Hopefully he gets caught. In Laurel County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. The sheriff's office has no updates on the case, and at this time, Thomas Scott is not booked in the Laurel County Detention Center. First responders in one central Kentucky county are warning heroin users to watch out for a bad batch. The Moorhead Police Department responded to a couple of overdoses recently. They say the drug they're seeing is 40 to 50 times stronger than heroin. 
Brown County Chief Deputy Joe Klein says the drug's effects are scary, and he doesn't see overdoses stopping anytime soon. And I really believe that as bad as it is, it's not going to be if it's when. That's what we're seeing. It's just going to be when when it hits. And, you know, it's hit in Cincinnati. It's hit in, in West Virginia around the Huntington area. Um, you know, I think Clark County's had some overdoses. Montgomery, you know, it's just a matter of time it's going to be here. I and mean, we, we realize that. The chief deputy says first responders in Rowan County are working together to combat the overdoses. He thinks users are taking their normal amount, not realizing the drug is much stronger. Kentucky State Police tracked a missing Boyle County teenager all the way to New Mexico. Investigators found 15-year-old Jenna Oakley in a Motel 6 parking lot in Tucumcari. They say Oakley was with 20-year-old Kenneth Nye. Family reported Oakley missing Thursday after they found her stepmother Rhonda dead in their home. New Mexico police say Oakley and Nye were in her stepmother's car, reported stolen late last week. Nye is charged with contributing to the delinquency of a minor. The coroner says the death of Oakley's stepmother is a homicide, but troopers haven't yet said just how she died. The homicide rate in Louisville has hit a recent record high. Officers have dealt with 80 so far this year. That number matches the same amount they handled for all of 2015. Investigators say most of the deaths are linked to rival gang activity. The highest number of homicides for the city was in 1971. Officers say they dealt with 110 homicides that year. New at 11, deputies in eastern Kentucky are trying to figure out what caused a deadly ATV wreck. The Pike County Sheriff's Office says 44-year-old John Barnett died Saturday when his ATV hit a tree. He was riding near a reclaimed surface mine in the Island Creek area. Some people who live nearby say ATVs are a common sight on the strip mine. One man says he often sees people riding them without helmets. They've got a road back in there, you know, and they can ride them four-wheelers and go wherever they want to. Deputies won't say if Barnett was wearing a helmet. They believe he lived in Pennsylvania and had ties to eastern Kentucky. A Perry County teen is behind bars tonight. Deputies say he led them on a chase and tried to run them over with a car. Deputies say Friday night they were checking out a break-in at Robert W. Combs Elementary. That's where they found 18-year-old Andrew Oliver and a 16-year-old. They say the two got into a car and drove off. Deputies say Oliver rammed into their cruiser and tried to run them over. He faces charges of attempted murder of a police officer, fleeing or evading police, and wanton endangerment. And police in Hardin County have arrested a man wanted for shooting someone and for threatening an officer. Elizabethtown police say Joe Jackson shot a person in the foot late last night at a home on Nicholas Street and then threatened one of their officers. Jackson is charged with assault and terroristic threatening. Investigators in Jessamine County are trying to find a man behind four burglaries. Deputies say Friday and Saturday, someone stole items from Mead Concrete, Signature Landscaping, Dixie Cafe, and Crosswoods Baptist Church. The pastor at Crosswoods Baptist Church says the thief stole an audio mixing board and an amplifier. There's consequences for the things you do. Choices you make, good or bad, there's a consequence. But there's also Jesus who loves you no matter what you do or how bad you mess up. If you trust in him, he can change you. Investigators released surveillance photos of the man they're looking for. They believe he was driving a black passenger car. A restaurant employee in Boyd County is in jail tonight. She's accused of lying about a robbery to cover up a theft. Ashland police say Alyssa Lunsford called in a robbery at the Long John Silver's Saturday morning. She told police a man broke in before the store opened and took $2,000. Police say the theft was fake. They charged Lunsford with falsely reporting an incident and theft by unlawful taking. Police also arrested Qualios Davis for receiving stolen property. They say he had $1,700 and some recently purchased items. The University of Kentucky is continuing their fight against their student-run newspaper, the Kentucky Colonel, and the paper is asking for help paying for the suit. The university filed a lawsuit against the paper this summer. It stems from the newspaper's request that UK release documents in a sexual assault and harassment case. The university denied their request, and Attorney General Andy Bashir sided with the paper on the open records request. The university is fighting back. This isn't just about, you know, this one case. This is about everything that UK does, and this is about all of us holding them accountable, not just here in the newsroom at the Colonel, but all media outlets and everybody that wants to open, pull an open records request. In a news release, UK said they denied the open records request to protect the identity of the victims. 
In the past, the colonel has received help from the Kentucky Press Association Legal Fund. Still ahead on WKYT, theaters nationwide, including here in the Bluegrass, are bringing back some of Gene Wilder's most popular films. And her means path is shifting away from the East Coast, but it's still expected to hit and pack a punch. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Mike Linden. You've got to love it. It has been an awesome weekend to spend some time outside. Sunny skies, temperatures right around normal. Today, though, things did begin to heat up a little bit, but regardless, still a beautiful day in the bluegrass, and we are still dealing with fantastic conditions right now. We look at the Defender Radar Network, some thin, wispy clouds out there, but nothing that's going to impact your evening by any stretch of the imagination. High pressure continues to sit over Virginia and West Virginia, and that has provided us with the dry, dry conditions normally associated with high pressure. It's also caused the winds to come in from the east and blow toward the west, whereas normally we get those winds from the east blowing toward the west. So we're going against the grain. It has been an odd weekend. But hey, we haven't really heard many complaints from this big change in our pattern. It has provided us with some awesome conditions. Temperatures right now sitting in the mid to low 70s and upper 60s, so a little warmer than where we have been over the past few days. That's the trend. Temperatures are slowly warming up, and they will continue to do so as we head into your Labor Day Monday. Temperatures today sat right around the mid to low 80s. Tomorrow, things warming up just a little bit. Back to the upper 80s in most spots and could even see a few low 90s out there one when all is said and done as far as the clouds those will remain quite limited as well a really good looking labor day moving into tuesday that is the turning point for the work week we at that point are going to lose the pristine sunny evening or sunny days rather and welcome in what looks to be the return of the moisture therefore the scattered showers the thicker cloud cover temperatures will still run quite warm on tuesday though the upper 80s but regardless things aren't going to be as pretty tuesday moving forward that's when things do get a bit more unsettled moving into the second half of our work week as far as your 7 day forecast with the chances for rain things do begin to ramp up a little bit as we head into the second half of the work week for now, it doesn't look like any of these days will be a washout, but things will certainly be a bit more wet than they have been over the past several days. But tomorrow, if you plan on being outside, well, you don't have to worry about having a backup plan. Tomorrow looks fantastic. The upper 80s, so a little warmer than where we were today, but a lot of sunshine for you and an overall really good-looking Labor Day for you. Tuesday, when you're heading back to work, it should look and feel a lot like Labor Day as well. A little steamier, though. The humidity rising, as we talked about, Tuesday is the turning point. That's when things do begin to change. Our pattern taking a wetter, potentially or potentially muggy look. And that all begins, Kristen, Wednesday, pushing into next week. And those overnight lows, though, for the next few evenings, I mean, that's as good as it's going to get. Room temperature, the mid to high 60s. Really? Not too bad at all. Gotta love it. Thank you, Mike. New York City says its beaches will be off limits to swimming, bathing, and surfing for a second day on Labor Day because of rip currents stemming from Hermine. The storm is well offshore, but continues to churn up dangerous waves and currents along Atlantic beaches. New Jersey's governor is warning people on the Jersey Shore that Hermine could bring tropical storm force winds and flooding to coastal areas tomorrow. Next on WKYT, Mother Teresa becomes a saint. What the Pope had to say about the nun to a crowd of thousands. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $101 million. And Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $186 million. Pope Francis canonized Mother Teresa today in a ceremony that drew an estimated 120,000 people to the Vatican. CBS's Seth Doan was at the ceremony. The faithful packed St. Peter's Square beneath a giant portrait of the now Saint Teresa of Calcutta. But even Pope Francis acknowledged, I think maybe we will have some difficulty calling her Saint Teresa. Santa Teresa. 
Because of her tenderness, he added, we will continue to call her Mother Teresa. I think people recognized her as a living saint when, yes. when she was alive. They, they knew. People Rick knew. Farrell and Mary Bassaloni yes. came from Anchorage, Alaska. She gave of herself. She gave her life to, to help the poor. Pope Francis praised that dedication as nuns from her order listened on. The Pope noted Mother Teresa had defended human life, the unborn, and the abandoned. Mother Teresa was called the saint of the gutters, and before becoming Pope, Francis was referred to as the bishop of the slums. Both put the poor at the center of their ministry, and today Pope Francis called poverty a crime. In Rome, Indian flags were flown with pride, while in Calcutta, formerly known as Calcutta, where Mother Teresa focused her missionary work for nearly half a century, others watched the canonization on a large TV screen. Aaron McKelvey and Paul Hunter traveled to Rome from Dallas. They're not Catholic, but said Mother Teresa's appeal is universal. Great humanitarian, great, great compassion for the, the less fortunate. So. She means something to many people, regardless of faith. The Albanian-born Nobel Peace Prize winner who dedicated her life to those in the shadows was honored today in the bright sunlight, less than two decades after her death. Seth Doan, CBS News, Rome. Mother Teresa died in 1997 at the age of 87. The University of Louisville's former president is expected to announce tomorrow he is stepping down as president of the U of L Foundation. The Courier Journal reports the organization has called a special executive committee meeting tomorrow. They're set to discuss personnel meetings. James Ramsey resigned as the university's president back in July. He stayed on as the foundation's president. We have a scheduling reminder tonight for people living in Lexington. Because of the holiday weekend, the trash pickup schedule is changing. There will be no collection tomorrow. People who normally have their trash picked up Monday will get it Wednesday. Businesses with dumpsters with pickup Monday will have their units picked up Tuesday. And those with Tuesday service will have pickup Wednesday. Fans of the late Gene Wilder can catch one of the actor's most popular movies this week. Movie Tavern in Branding Crossing in Jessamine County will show the 1971 version of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Wednesday and Thursday at 7.30. Tickets are $5. Wilder died last week due to complications from Alzheimer's. After years in business, the Lexington Movie Theater will close tomorrow. Workers at Cinemark's Woodhill Movies 10 told us the theater will shut down Monday. Cinemark reported revenue for the theater has been declining. Lee Kaysen next with sports. A former Wildcat got some bad news today. Yeah, that's right. Second year pro Bud Dupree may miss most of the season for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll let you know why. And Mark Stoops has a message for the fans following a disappointing loss to open the season. That's next in sports. One of Kentucky football's slogans going into the season was finish. The six-letter word representing close losses last season where the Cats let one get away. But finish was exactly what the Wildcats failed to do on Saturday night. After jumping out to a 35-10 lead, Kentucky surrendered 34 unanswered points, losing the season opener to Southern Miss. After the game, Mark Stoops apologized to the fan base and asked that they not give up on his team. We need him. Uh, I ask them not to bail on us because this football team's got a lot of good games in them. And um, but you know it does it does hurt. You know and this when you get it teed up and you got a big uh, game like that and you're playing very very well and and you lose it. Um, you know you understand. You know that it comes with the territory. And uh, you know you you got to accept that criticism and and uh, and know the, the the truths of it and know the things that you got to just put your head down and go to work and it'll come together. There were a few bright spots to build on for the Wildcats, notably the play of Drew Barker in the first half. Barker connected on passes of 72, 43, and 53 yards for touchdowns. He had four touchdown passes in the first half. That's the first quarterback from UK to do that since Andre Woodson back in 2007. His four touchdowns and 323 yards passing were career highs, but Barker's three turnovers in the second half were costly. We just got to make sure we put two halves together. The last two games we played, 
it's been a tale of two halves, and we just got to make sure we got to pull a full game together. And I feel like if we do that, we'll have a great season, and we have the players to do it. So, um, you know, I'm really confident in this team. It's only one game. Like I said, we got 11 more. So we're not going to sit here and sulk about it or, um, you know, get down on ourselves. We know we got 11 more opportunities to go out there um, and win. And to truly put this game in perspective for you, you have to look at the stat comparisons for Kentucky from the first half to the second half. All 35 of UK's points came in the first half. 387 total yards in the first half compared to just 56 after halftime. Passing yards, 277 to 36. The Wildcats had one five-yard penalty in the first half compared to five for 70 costly yards in the second half. Turnovers were they were costly in the second half as well. And total offensive plays, just 14 for the Wildcats after halftime. That right there is truly what you call a tale of two halves. Number 25, Florida, meanwhile, did just enough to beat UMass 24-7 on Saturday night to extend the nation's longest winning streak in season openers to 27. Now they'll turn their attention to another streak. The Gators have won 29 straight in the series against Kentucky. That's the nation's longest active streak between any two opponents. It sure would do a lot for Kentucky's morale to end that streak against Florida. And they can do it. The game is Saturday afternoon at 3.30. You can see it right here on WKYT. Late last night, Alabama was rolling in its season opener with USC. The Tide were led in rushing by Madison Southern product Damian Harris. This right here was Harris's longest run of the night. A 73-yard burst in the third quarter brought down just shy of the end zone. Harris finished with 138 yards rushing on nine carries as Bama pounds USC 52-6. to six. The NFL season starts next week, but it won't for former Wildcat and Pittsburgh Steeler linebacker Bud Dupree. The Steelers placing Dupree on injured reserve today after missing all of training camp with a groin injury. Dupree may not miss the season entirely. An NFL rule change this offseason allows teams to designate a player to return from the injured reserve list after six weeks. The player must miss at least eight weeks total before being eligible to play. Some good news regarding the local product. A day after cutting former EKU tight end Matt Lingle, the Bengals have added him to their 10-player practice squad. Lingle spent all of last season on the practice squad in Cincinnati. Lingle played. Uh, at EKU from 2010 to 2014. To the pitch, Kentucky women's soccer hosting High Point early in the first half. Zoe Swift, that's a good soccer name, right? Centers the pass to Tanya Samarzic, and Samarzic puts Kentucky on the board 1 0. In the 41st minute, Swift with the ball again, this time on the left side of the field. Perfect pass again to Kaylee Vogel. And she uses her head to score her first goal of the season. The Wildcats were up two at the half. Second half now, Kentucky on the move. It's Samarzic delivering once again off the pass from Gina Crossetti. Second of the day for Samarzic. And High Point reaches a new low point, losing to Kentucky 3-0. And Kristen in the NASCAR Sprint Cup race, Martin Truex Jr. holds off Kevin Harvick to win the Southern 500. In your hometown of Darlington, South Carolina, you grew up like a couple of miles from the track. Track too tough to tame. How many races did you attend? Zero. Never been to the race. <laughs> we'll be right back with a final look at weather. Like a great holiday tomorrow. It's been great almost every day this weekend, and now as we go into the third part of our holiday weekend, things are looking fantastic as well. The upper 80, so a little warmer, but overall looking great. Lots of sunshine. If you have plans to be outside for Labor Day, it's all systems go. The turning point looks like Tuesday into Wednesday when we could be potentially tracking some showers, potentially even some thunderstorms. But until that point, things look awesome. You guys have any Labor Day plans? Just yeah. gonna enjoy the great outdoors. I'm gonna do absolutely nothing. That is my Labor Day plan. <laughs> I'm with you there. I'm not working. I'm with you there. We hope you have a nice Labor Day. And we'll see you back here at 4.30 a.m. Have a good night.